Then you have the T-Jazz or Agni type uh, Mahabhuta, which is, the, which is the power of life and fire. This, of course, you know, uh, is, is that power that, that, uh, that helps bring about the expansion of something and the purification of something. Then you have the apas, which is really etheric water. And this, this apas uh, is that power that it pervades everything. Is 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 the liquids within this, within the universe? Can you make it bigger? Huh? Can you make it a little bigger? Um, I don't know how to make it bigger. The bottom right. At the bottom right. Bottom right. Right here. Right on there. Right on the to, the to the left. left. The blue. The blue. The yeah, line. to the left. The to no, the right. right. Or is it seventy five percent? Yeah, yeah, right to the left. Oh, oh down to the bottom. Center. To the right. To the right. Right here? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. so no <laughs> so try the presentation on the, on the left. You can, you can zoom in, but then move the bar at the bottom so that it centers you. That bar right in What, right here? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that's better. better. Can you see it now? Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. How do we just go full a screen? Anybody, anybody know? Do a presentation. Presentation mode? Try that. Right next to the person on the left hand, right here. Yeah. And how do I get out? Escape. Is that better? Yeah. 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 That's good. So then we have the the etheric solid. This, you know, this is the this is the shakti power, or the not the shakti power, I like to call, it, that solidifies all of these things. It, it brings it to the visible world on all the realms of existence, because even the etheric and astral realms are physical, are solid realms. It's just the it's solid. It's solid for that particular. It's solid for that particular uh, realm of existence for that frequency. So from there, this these these Mahabhutas are pushed through the universe or the manifested creation or the manifested. Uh, the, the, the manifested part uh, of, of creation or, or the absolute and it is a substance that the the galaxies use the central suns of the galaxies the the, uh, solar, the solar uh, logos of the galaxies, the, the suns of each, I mean, of, of the, the suns of each solar system. This is the, this is the, uh, the, the cosmic elements, is that thing that is absorbed into the sun and it pushes out and manifests and helps to manifest and maintain life throughout all creation, whether it's the central sun of a galaxy or a sun of a solar system or even a planet or even a moon. Now, in the Sanskrit terminology, the sun is, is looked at as a maha uh, bindu, okay? A maha bindu. Our sun, we call it a maha bindu, 
And it has another name of Vishnu, too, as well. What's it called? Vishnu. 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 You know, it, it has another name as that. A great, a great lord or galactic lord that, that, uh, that some ancient teachers claim visit here. Okay? So, the son of Bindu is a compaction of uh, energies. All right? It has a compaction of mind substance. It has a compaction of, uh, of, of uh, this cosmic this this the cosmic uh, tabic rays or tabic matter, right? And it produces these five major problems that we know of. And it works in producing all these things, it helps to maintain and create realms of existence. So that life screens like us, and even like the the uh, the life streams of bacteria, can live and gain experience. So all so 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 the mineral life, the uh, the plant life, the animal life, and the human life, even the devic uh, uh, realms of life. The sun served them and gave them. The sun modified these, this cosmic, these cosmic elements in order to help them maintain and sustain and gain experience through our many, many, many cycles of reincarnation. Back to what's called the Shiva state or the Godhead. Okay? So, each one of these pranas are connected to one of the major psychic centers in the body, along the spine. Prana is connected to the heart chakra. Arpana is connected to the, the, uh, the base of the spine, the mulahara chakra. Samana is connected to the manicure chakra, the solar plexus, and udana to the throat, and viana to the sex center. Each one of these pranas have a, have a unique quality about itself too. The, um, the, hum the, 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 uh, They have a unique quality about it. The prana, the prana in the heart, it it falls, it moves from it moves from the upper body down to 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 the uh, to the solar plexus. A prana moves from it moves from the the base chakra up to the solar plexus and heart chakra. But in, in, in normal man, in basic man, when the, when the prana is moving down, the apana is moving down too. When prana is moving up, apana is, is moving up. So they never, they, 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 they never stay, uh, uh, they never mix or, or stay mixed for long if they do. Is when the man become more advanced that he that these pranas uh, begin to congregate and mix together. Now, the the samana prana is located in the solar plexus center, and and it's around those vital organs that you see this type of energy, this subtle energy. The udana prana is located within the, the head and the extremities of the body, the, the arms and the legs. And the 
Viana prana is a prana located in the sex region and it pervades the whole body. It, it, it travels throughout the whole body. Such is the nature of these primers. Now, let's see this here. Let's see. The, these primers move. They come through the sun from the, from the absolute or Shiva and they pervade our earth about the 360 tabic rays of, of earth. And they are, they, they are modified by the Mahabindu which is, the sun is like a god to us. And once man realized that, he'll move forward in many, many aspects of life. But these, the, prana, the pranas, and even the tabic rays, actually comes from the absolute as well. These, the, 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 this cosmic energy is modified through the sun, and it's also modified by the earth, and it's also modified by our moon. And it's these, and these type of rays that carry this cosmic energy of the Mahabhutas and the Pranas is, uh, is is uh is modified it is it, is carried on the tabic rays on this tabic matter of tabic rays and is modified by these three great mahabindus the sun the, the earth and the moon and it's distributed within our major psychic centers the earth the earth takes care of the of the first two major chakra centers at the base and the sex, the sun, the the uh, the solar plexus, and the and the heart chakra, and the moon, the the throat chakra, and the Christ chakra, and they are divided. These type of rays are divided among these chakras in an unequal fashion. And they are used to help develop and, and to develop our realms of existence. That's what they're actually used for. And also, and also in developing our realms of existence, it, of course, it helped to develop the, uh, it, it, they are the seeds of consciousness for mankind, or for the souls of man. Any, any questions? So the topic rings that are modified by each earth, the sun, and the moon. Those are fed directly to those corresponding psychic centers? Yeah. And then from that energy, those, they condition those realms for us? Do we understand how it corresponds to the realms? They condition what now? You said those, they condition, they, they, I'm not sure how the topic rates for each entity work in relation to the realms that they attach to. Okay, now, the chakras are what? What? Windows. They're or windows, but they also what? They're both tech sensors too. But what are they also? Huh? Realms of consciousness. You'll notice that each one of them is a particular realm. They represent a particular realm. 
Now, of course, we associate the chakras with our, with our body. And it's only, the only reason why we do that is because of our own ignorance and our own limited state of consciousness. But the chakras themselves are actually realms of existence. Okay? They're realms of consciousness that we operate on. Okay, now even in the physical world, we see, we see the whole physical world as a physical world, right? And we can see all the different, uh, uh, ge you know, the, the, the geological uh, locations. But when you fly into those geological locations, you notice there's a difference, right? You know, like if we leave Miami, and, and we land somewhere in Hawaii, we're gonna notice, notice a big difference. If we leave Miami and go to Georgia, we're gonna notice a big difference, right? Yeah. Because why? The mindset is different there, right? There's a whole different character there. In Miami, you may notice that, that you have a very, very busy area, and then you have a laid back area, right? You have a very uh, extremely rich area, and you have an extremely poor area, right? It's not the middle, is, is, in the middle is not too many, you know, middle class people, right? Mm -hmm. They're either wealthy or poor, right? If you fly to Georgia and land there, you'll notice a whole different mindset, you know? So, <laughs> you know, you may find, a, you know, more classes of people simply because of the, 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 it's the, maybe the things that they do, their, their, their religion, their, their, their work ethics is totally different, right? So where does that come from? That comes from a level of mind, a level of consciousness. So even on the physical realm, you have these many, many different levels. You know, uh, for instance, you know, we may go to a so-called third world country and we may say, well, why they, you know, how can they live on dirt floors? How can they not have air conditions? But they feel that there's nothing wrong with that. That they live in a good life, you know, because it's all their state of mind, right? It's a different level of consciousness. So it's, it's our level, it's, it's, it's our level of mind or consciousness that we can tap into that really describe and, and, and place us where we are, you know? Because, you know, uh, someone making, for instance, with, we always have to associate this, with some, it's a shame, but someone who's making $50,000 a year versus someone who's making uh, uh, $5 million a year, their mindset's gonna be different when it comes to physical and material things, you know? The fifty thousand dollar person, they might be more responsible to the things around them than the five million dollar person. You know, just a different mindset. You know, so so it's where you are. So each one of these are realms of existence, but within these realms of existence, you have many realms. You have many many levels of realm, and each major realm have many sub-realms. And some of the sub-realms have sub-realms on top of them because each chakra express a, a, a level of consciousness or, or multiple levels of consciousness. And you not only have the major chakras, but you have all the chakras of the body, you know, 108 chakras within the body that's producing these many, many realms of existence, and each one of them have sub-realms, and those sub-realms have other sub-realms, because of states of mind. So by, by the way you're explaining it, um, we live hand in hand with the We can see these realms even here in this physical. Of course. Yeah, we, I, I guess you know, one of the things that a lot of people, when you talk about the realm, they think it's this completely different world. It really isn't. It's, Really right in front of you. Like the, right trees, in front of you. the trees are right in front of you. Yeah. They live within their own They live in their own realm of consciousness. You know? The animals live in their realms of consciousness, but yet we are witnessing them. So 
the, the biggest difference between this physical realm and the astral realm is that the astral realm is vibrating on a different level. But when you get to the astral realm, it's the same thing. You have dirt, you have a sky, you know, <laughs> you have something that you can touch, you have animals, you have all those things still exist there. But, and on that realm, there's many, many levels of realms. The biggest difference is that the, the, uh, the mental quality is different. You know, what you want, you can, you, you can pull those things to, to you in some type of mental magnetic way and produce it if you're strong enough, if your mind is strong enough. You know, but if your mind not, you'll be in the same plus. You'll be the same plus you are here on this earth, where you have to struggle to, to get that mental energy uh, behind whatever you want. But so that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Can you maybe elaborate on how some of the greatest teachers and masters have taken on a life of perceived poverty and as it relates to their level of consciousness? Because they don't view the physical world, and that's something you have to struggle with. That's something you struggle with. The more, the more you get into these teachings, the more you realize that the energy that's put behind uh, uh, material wealth is it's almost useless. It's a useless energy placed behind that because your greatest energy should be uh, developing your, your, your mental abilities, see, and your spiritual abilities. So, 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 so they lack a, a, uh, a, a desire for physical things, you know, and it's, and it's hard it's, it's a great struggle that you battle with. You know, you don't, you know, you, you don't, you don't via the uh, a, a car, a house, and a big color TV. You don't via those things. You know, you know those things really doesn't mean that you could do without it. Once you obtain some type of glimpse of the, of, of this absolute power. Because you know your greatest strength is developing yourself spiritually. Although it's very hard to see the spiritual attainment and, and the spiritual realm living here on the physical realm. It's a very, very hard thing to do. If we go out right now and we go and, and we put and, and we buy all the materials to build a house, within four to five weeks we see this big house there standing in front of us. So we feel like we accomplished something. But in your spiritual life, you can go and put all that energy behind <laughs> yourself, and you can't see it necessarily physically, but it's there. And but the the the, the adepts and the masters and the great spiritual leaders who have attained that ability to see it, they see it because the the past, the present, and the future is now. See, that's the difference. You, you open your level of consciousness up to, to that point where you can see past, present, and future right now. So it's no big mystery. So your energies, you feel your energies are wasted chasing behind uh, <coughs> the dollar and the physical things. So when you see them in poverty, <laughs> You know, that's why I say so-called third world countries, because I really don't believe that. But when you see these so-called people in poverty, they're really not in poverty. You know, they're living in this, in this elevated state of wealth, you know, and, and they don't feel what you feel. They don't desire what you feel. You know, they don't desire all those things. You know, so that's, you know, that's the big difference. So in talking about, did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. So in, talk, in talking about the tabic rays, did I answer your question in tabic rays or I need to elaborate a little bit more? I was just wondering from the, the 360 are sent through the sun mm -hmm. and then each, um, the earth and the moon and the sun again 
the, or the Earth and the Moon, they condition them again, mm -hmm. and those are the influences behind, say, the base of the spine and the sex center for the Earth. They yeah. Count the in other words, in, in other words, the soul comes, the soul, the soul involves itself, and we're going That's the next chapter. The soul involves itself and take the shatty power and mold and shape the shatty power into, into a shatty consciousness that's being radiated from the sun uh, and, and modified by the earth and modified by the moon. The soul takes the shatty power and mold it and shape it and into, this, into this scream of consciousness. Now, you gotta remember that each one of these are realms of existence. Mm -hmm. and, and within, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a sacred uh, line of force with that, that connects all those realms of existence called Shushunna in the Sanskrit terminology. And the soul takes this Shakti power that's being radiated and modified by these great Mahabhutas and shape it and mold it and concentrate it into a stream of Shakti consciousness and push it down Shushunna. Now within, now, now the core of Shushunna is, is, is this Brahmanati and it's a sacred, it's a sacred place for pure consciousness. So the, so, so, so the soul shapes this Shakti into pure consciousness in order for it to become, uh, uh, in, 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 order, in, in order for the soul to limit its awareness in a sense because the soul has this, this, this extreme, supreme awareness because it's connected to the spirit, mm -hmm. to the great shiva power. But it wants to evolve itself because it needs to go through cycles of reincarnation. So when the soul does it and it pushes it down, it brings it down to at least the, the, uh, the base of the spine. And there, the pressures of that particular realm of existence or realms of existence has just enough pressure to mold and shape this shakti power into a vehicle of consciousness. And that vehicle of consciousness that most of us know of as Kundalini, see? And then the soul has limited consciousness. And we know that most of the power of Kundalini is locked up, it's dormant. And there's just a small percentage that flows out. And the soul uses the power of Kundalini as a vehicle of consciousness in order to move through life in order to move from one life to the next life, to the next life, to the next life, to the next life, to the next life. So these, the tabic rays help to build uh, uh, links uh, or, or realms of existence throughout the earth, right? And then the soul links up with all those realms in order to allow us to gain experience in a limited state of consciousness through all those realms throughout hundreds of thousands of reincarnations. So each time of grade is, con is a level of consciousness? Yes. Each, each, one. each one is a level of consciousness. So you can say that within the power there's 56 levels of consciousness? Yes, in a sense, yeah. Plus, it could be 56 times, you know, to the 10th power. Oh, that's why they say that just between and the sex center, we have mastered 118, 118, 118 realms. realms in order to reach the, the, the depth level of the solar plexus. So, and, and that, that mastership of those realms, that's just an understanding of them? Or? No, that, that means that you can mold and shape the cosmic powers of those realms. You can you you can utilize it in any which way you want to. The pranas and the pranas, and everything that exists there, all the energy that exists there, you have power. Okay, and, and that's what you're doing as you move Kundalini and fold up from. Up yes, when you move when when you when you move the Kundalini, when you wake the Kundalini up, 
and move the Kundalini in its full aspect up through those chakras, that's what you're doing. And mastering the energy of those particular chakras, the energy configuration of those, of those chakras, which are all the energy that make up all those realms of existence. So it might sound silly, but so raising Kundalini in a sense, it's like downloading data for each realm, right? Downloading the in full a, understanding of how to manipulate. In a sense, downloading the data and comprehending the data. Just not yeah. downloading, yeah. you're not going to comprehend it at the same time. Being able to put it into yeah. Being able to use it. You you learn all the you you, you learn all the uh, all the the formulas. You become the great alchemy of each realm. So you know how to use that energy. In other words, the some of the greatest black musicians of this earth were the alchemies. Well, yeah, were the people who, who came to the physical realm, realized their, their limitations, and began to, to, to mix chemicals and substance and, you know, <laughs> and, and began to manipulate all these things in order to do whatever they want to do. See? But on the, on the subtle level, on the subtle level, that's where we should do this at. And then we can do it on the physical level. Right? So, so you kind of understand what the type of grades are now? Mm -hmm. Or its functions? Any other questions? When we move Kundalini to like the solar plexus or to the throat, mm -hmm. are we in a sense Changing under which uh, you see the Mahabuddha, that word. Um, what do you mean changing? Like, say, if I move to the solar plexus center, I'm now operating on the topic rays emanating from the sun. In a sense. You move the what? From now? the solar plexus into the heart. Mm -hmm. Move Kundalini to those centers, I'm now either working from those topic rays or I'm working on the solar level. For so we're topic level. You still have to, in order to unlock the energies of the solar plexus center, you must unlock the granty knot of the of the of the of the uh, of the base and the sex. So that energy allows you to work within that uh, the solar level of the Vishnu Granny Knot. Mm -hmm. So you never, you, 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 you're still working on the earth level. Which is the energy that is conditioned by the sun. Yeah. And, and without that earth energy, you can't work within uh, the, uh, the, the Vishnu Granty level. You understand? Yeah. And then without the, uh, the Ruta Granty and the Vishnu Granty, you cannot work on the on the Brahma Granty level because you need that energy in order to deal with that. You understand? Yeah. If not, then you 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 have you don't have access. So you can't throw away nothing, you can't un you know, it's, you're always using them. Alright? No more questions on this? Okay. Now, when the when the power, when the soul we when the soul pushes this shaky power down to the base of the spine and the shakti power turns into turns into the the um, kundalini the kundalini releases what's called the four states of sound in the sanskrit terminology they call it uh, well they, well, we, well, we translate it, we translate it as 
a celestial song from the Kundalini, from, from the goddess of Kundalini. And this is this is what happens. The Shakti consciousness falls into the the uh, base of the spine and it curls up into a three and a half knot, which produces this thing called Kundalini. This Kundalini begins to begins to release a sound vibration. That sound vibration uh, becomes the life force. It carries the life force that's not dormant from the Kundalini up through the body. It carries this life force by sound, right? Because why? Because all the chakras are what? What are the chakras? They're sound vibrations. And sound vibration is, is what? What is sound? Consciousness. Consciousness. Right? So these are the levels of sound. The first sound that's, that's, that's released from the Kundalini is an unmanifested, motionless sound. It's a parasound that, that radiates from the Kundalini. Tremendous power. And from there, because, because here, this is a Shiva state. It's in a Shiva state, in a sense. It's radiating because why? What happens, what is a three and a half knot? Energy configuration that reveals what? Shiva. <laughs> that reveals Shiva, because why? Because 80 to 90% of it goes dormant. It goes back into this state of, of absolute potential. And we know that only because the only thing that can produce absolute potential is God, or something connected to God. So this is what the Shiva does. I mean, this is what the Shakti does. They reveal this Shiva state, and it releases this, this God-like ability. So it becomes unmanifested. Huh? So it becomes, it becomes, it, it becomes partially unmanifested. That's why it releases, you know, that's how it goes into a dormant state of consciousness. In other words, the soul, that portion of the soul that involved itself have to connect itself back to the higher, the higher part of the soul. And the only way you can do it is by going into, in, into this state of this state of samadhi or meditation. Right? <laughs> it locks itself away from you know from the uh, basic self of itself. Right? And then it produces the energy that, that allows life to move forward. So, so that's what, you know. This is what the ancient teachings tell us. And from there, this parasound goes up, and it produces the first movement of sound. And that's around the sex center and the solar plexus center. And then, when it gets to the solar plexus center, there's a subtle aspect of sound, which brings meaning behind things. You know, if you want the meaning of anything then what do you do? You examine it thoroughly. Why? Why do you examine it thoroughly? To extract from it the knowledge? To know the subtle movements behind it. What makes this thing act the way it do? So you begin to examine the subtle aspects of that thing because you want to know the mechanics of it, right? Because the mechanics of it produce the, the, uh, the physical, view that you're looking at. And from there, what do you do? It, we, you know, we're told that, we, we're told that the heart center gives meaning to everything. It gives meaning to everything. And it produces all the subtle bodies of, of that, that, you know, that we have. It is there where the power of, of all the subtle and physical bodies come from. And, from, and then it moves, once it creates the bodies of consciousness, it moves to the throat chakra, which produces gross, the gross aspect of sound, which gives us the ability to, to express ourselves on the physical plane. It's, it's repeating the process of thought. Repeating releases the first word, and then from that, 
Yes, it's repeated. And that's what it that's what it keeps doing over and over and over and over again. This is after it forms the three and a half knots. This is after they have to form the three and a half knot in order for the sound to be released. In order for the soundless sound to be released, they have to <laughs> other than that you can't you can't have it. Um, the pre probably said this, but the so the parasound, that is an aspect of the dormant shiva state of the yes, That's the only way it's released. That's the only way it's released. It's the sound made by the 80 and 90 percent that's dormant. Yeah. And, and it releases the part that's not dormant, and that becomes the life force within your body. And then you have to, you have to take control over that 2 percent, 4 percent, 5 percent, or whatever it is, in order to wake up the 80 to 90 percent. And that's where pranayama comes in. All the yogas, you know, yoga means union with God. See, that's what, that's why it means that. So, because because you have to be able to con, to regulate the energy, the breath, and the, the thing the thing in the body, the breath is the is the most powerful energy in the in the body. Because if you stop breathing within five minutes, you die. Right? The water is the second thing. Food is the third thing. Okay. So and everything else fall after those three. So 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 that's you know you know that's why uh, in every yoga, in every part of in every aspect of yoga, whether it's nana yoga, karma yoga, vata yoga, raja yoga, uh, 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 tantra yoga, kriya yoga, no no matter what yoga it is. Prana yoga is connected to it. The, pran the, 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 the pranayama systems are within all those yogas. Because why? It regulates the energy within the body in order, for, in, 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 in order for what? In order for you to take control of that energy. The energy that's moved by this sound, that's released from this sound, is the nadis. What is the nadis? What is the pathways of the nadis? Mind force. It's the pranic force. It's the flow of energy. It's the breath, right? You have you have the 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 ida nadi here and the pingala nadi here. The same way with your eyes, your ears. It's ida and pingala, ida and pingala. Because why? Is, is the life force of the body that allows you to express yourself. You have the nada, you, 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 you have the, the, the top lip and the bottom lip and the tongue also represents these energies. It represents these energies. So our, in relation to our development, in relation to the four, the four states of sound, though that four to eight to 10 percent that's not dormant, that's where our impurities come from, through a wrong thought and action. Well, and well, yeah, through your, it's not, it's not from the energy. Yes, it's through a wrong thought It's action. from the actions that you produce from the energy. So we put a great emphasis in the yogas to find that silence. So we can receive, so we can hear, so we, so we can understand and realize the power sound again. Right, right. in a sense, yeah. Uh, that's why we put such a big emphasis on silence, through that 10 percent, whatever, and a wrong out of action, we've because from silence comes sound. Sound is consciousness. Sound is life. So silence is what? It's potential. Potential is what? Endless, endless potential is Shiva. Is God. So, so, so that's why you, you know, because, because from, because silence is always there, but sound isn't. You know, the sound, you know, you know, in other words, you have, if you can look at it, you have this continuous line of silence, right? And this is sound. It always start and ends. See, it goes up and always come back down. But when it comes back down, you have what? Silence. You have silence again. So silence is reality. And sound is just something 
that happens. The silence never changes. The silence never changes. It never changes. It's always constant. Because even because you cannot have sound without having silence. Because the silence is there is the background for sound, so it produces sound. It is the backbone, it, it is the backboard in which sound comes. See, so 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 therefore even this silence, this silence is also spirit. Which is also is God. It's the parasound. Yeah. It's the parasound, yeah. It's soundless. Because from that comes everything. It's the great potential. It's the great potential. So, so the other sounds, it's what uh, that dormant state of Kundalini uses to express itself, to create the expression. To create the life. The, the Pashyanti and the Manyama yeah. sound. Yeah. It brings meaning. It brings substance and meaning. It's a lot. You know? Okay, so 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 this is, this is uh, you know, all this is energy. Now we can go deep into it. Like I said, we, you know, uh, in fact, I wrote a book called the, the Language of the Soul. And in that, there's a, there's, there's a whole chapter on this. All right? It might be a couple chapters on it. So when we take control of that 10% that, that is not dormant, and then we start to increase the amount of kundalini in the body. Are we, in a sense, taking from that unmanifested reserve and manifesting more of it? No, no, no. What are you doing is you use what you have and condition that to purify the body. Because all yoga is about purification. That's the only way you're going to make union with the absolute. See, see, what we have did, we have contaminated <coughs> our, our minds, our bodies, and our environments. And, and, and this is the impurities that the ancient uh, uh, Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the Upanishads talk about. It's, it's really these, these three lower chakras that we have really brought about uh, uh, distortion and impurities. So what we have to do, we have to clean that up. Because that, because the impurities within our life, within our mind and actions, is the things, is the thing that is, is uh, creating the blockage of the flow of energy. Now, this, 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 this sound vibration that radiates through the body that pushes the natis, the ida and pingala, because I, the, 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 nati, the, the nati only means a flow of energy. That's a simple meaning of nati. It's a flow of energy. And this flow of energy flows from the, uh, the, the kundalini. Now, the, the our thoughts and actions over countless lifetimes have created all these different blockages. And we're told that the Nadis, uh, that, that there's over 200,000 pathways of Nadis that move from the, from the Mulahara chakra up to the Christ chakra. There's over 200,000 pathways. So over countless <laughs> incarnations, we have built all these different blockages, and it manifests itself in our actions of greed, anger, malice. Uh, all these things are blockage. These are blockages that, that we created. You know, our jealousy for each other, you know, all type of craziness. So this is why, the, you, know, it, you know, these type of actions stop us from advancing. It, it holds us up, and it keeps us into this 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 samsara, uh, this this wheel of reincarnation over and over and over and over and over and over and over. When we clear up these blockages and allow this this energy to flow in its natural fashion, then we purify the aura, 
we purify the water, and we take control over that portion of the of, of the of the Kundalini life force within us, where we can wake it up, and at will, we can take all the energy within the body and bring it to and bring it to the the Kundalini to the to the to the Mulahara chakra, wake up the Kundalini in a conscious state and move that Kundalini up through the spine, the Brahmanati, because right now the Brahmanati is closed. The Kundalini, when it goes into a state of dormancy, it closed the door to the Brahmanati in which it came from. But the only way you can, the only way you can get back to the Brahmanati, to this pure state of consciousness, this pure state of supreme consciousness, it's by waking the Kundalini up. But the only way you can do that is by using all the life force in the body to wake it up. So you bring that life force back down to the Kundalini. You wake up the Kundalini, you open the door, and you move through. Now, when you do that, you move through the Kundalini. Wherever you move the life force from the body, that body is dead. That part of the body is dead. If you move all the life force from the legs, then the legs is dead. But it's a conscious death because it was brought about by your will, by the will of you, the soul, to bring that about. And then you push the Kundalini up past the, the, uh, the, 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 the Mulahara up to the sex chakra, and everything below the sex chakra is dead. But it's a conscious state of death. And then you move it up to the to the solar plexus center. It's a conscious state. The functions of everything below the solar plexus center, the navel center, is dead. And, and you, you hear and understand these sounds. Yes. Of and you 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 become. You hear more than That's that. That's where the knowledge comes from. Yeah, yeah. But you hear more than that. You begin to because each chakra has a bindu a point of consciousness, an all-knowledge space, and you connect yourself to the absolute at that from, from that level. And you understand all the realms of existence that, 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 that's connected to that level. And you absorb the knowledge and understanding of all those things. Knowledge and understanding you can't even begin to explain when you come back to the physical, to this gross physical plane. You understand it, but there's no way you can communicate to other people. It takes, it takes decades, sometimes lifetimes, for you to begin to explain it to other people. It, it, it just, it's just it, because it's so much. And because, because the reality that most people think they're living, they're not living. Mm -hmm. They're totally oblivious to everything that's going on around them. So, so as you move that Kundalini up, you go into this, the, everything below that goes into this conscious state of death. You know, and you and you you it's it's a it's from a concentration level to a contemplation level to a meditation level to a level of samadhi to a level of cosmic consciousness where you connect to the cosmic consciousness of this earth and maybe this solar system. And and you and you begin to understand things far beyond our our levels of, of, of understanding. And that's why the adept can sit in a cave for 70, 80 years without having any material uh, uh, desire for, for uh, uh, some type of latte at uh, Starbucks or whatever. <laughs> he, he, he don't need that. He, he, it's just not needed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as Kundalini is awoken and, <clears throat> and full and moved of uh, Shashumna, these sounds are still being uh, sung by Kundalini, even though it's being awoken and moved. Well, the 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 you become the Devata if you can move Kundalini up like that. So you produce the parasound then. You take the you know you take the sounds and you place it on each petal. Each on each BJ. These are the BJs or the petals. Mm -hmm. Below this, you place the sounds because 
you have to place on each one of them when you begin to move the Kundalini up here, you, there's, each one of these represents a meditation. It represents a meditation that you must go into in order to unlock it. You must place the mantra there and you must bring about a meditation because from there it's released a great power. It's released great power and the meditation is done on each petal. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and from there comes the power to synchronize and unlock the door to the all knowledge space. Using the sound. Using the sound. Which is a mantra. Which is a mantra. Which is a meditation. Because within it is a meditation. It's the, it's the key, the key lock and, 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 and from there, the spirit, the spirit bathed the soul. The, the soul is bathed in the light of the spirit, in other words, in this meditation. It's, that's where the soul is bathed in the light of the spirit. And you, and you, and you have tremendous understanding and knowledge. That, that you cannot, I mean, it's, it's almost, like I said, when you come down out of the state, it's almost impossible for you to explain what just happened to you. Yeah. You become frustrated, and you, and you just, it takes decades to bring this knowledge to the world, to bring the understanding to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like going to a, a, a village that have never seen a car, never seen an airplane, never seen any type of mechanical machines, and you tell them that there's hundreds or thousands of mechanical machines that can be used to make their life more convenient. There's no way you can explain that to them. You know, because why? It would take decades to, to, bring, to bring the knowledge to them so that they can clearly understand it. It's like it's, it's like right now on the on the History Channel the last what six seasons with the ancient alien thing uh, they finally putting it together they finally saying okay uh, maybe the uh, Vedas was true you know <laughs> you know maybe the stories of Sri Krishna flying across the world and shooting and, and Rama and and uh, and, the, and the great master Rama defending these cities with with missiles and and flying machines was true, because now is now they you know they see the so-called modern warfare that you know that we have and we can send uh, drones you know clear across the world and pinpoint uh, uh, spots and blow it up and whatever and, and have it all on film you know you know now they see that these things are true you know because. How did these people thousands of years ago can describe the warfare that we're doing now? But from but they they didn't understand that for hundreds of years they didn't understand that. Of course, the <coughs> mystics did. We understood it. We said it. You know, we said that Lemuria was. Uh, you know, they had developed atomic power. You know, now the the scientists and you know they they go into these so-called ancient cities. And say, wait a minute! It, it, you know what you know what was described in these Upanishads uh, was true because you know we just dug up the ground and we found the sand that had turned to glass. And the only time it turned to glass is when you drop an atomic bomb on it. You know, so so. But ask them a couple hundred years ago, they would have said, no, there's no way. A hundred years ago, they would have said, no. Only the mystics were saying, yeah, it was true. Yeah, we did get to a point where we experimented with atomic power and we had atomic weapons and we blew and destroyed these cities. You know, so so that's the, you know, that's the state of consciousness that these in taking the past, the present, and the future become the now. And you can see these things just as plain as day. But there's no way in the world you can explain it to them, to the world around you. Only you have to wait for the proper time and until they get certain knowledge, then you can begin to use their familiar experience or the people around their familiar experience to explain to them. So that's what these states of consciousness do for you. So a, a master operating, you know, on our own, they raise Kundalini 
to the highest place and they brought it back down. Um, so they stopped the modifications and all that. They're operating from these states of sound within their conscious life. Yeah, right? they can, they, they have the power of Kundalini. They can move and shift their mind in a fraction of a second where they need to go to. You know, I mean, they have, when they bring, when they bring the Kundalini back down, they leave a part of the Kundalini, they leave a greater portion of Kundalini operating, even though they have to bring the Kundalini back to its dormant state, but they leave a greater portion of Kundalini operating within, you know, within the, uh, the active part of their, like it's the 10 or 20%. Right? Yeah. They leave it operating. Now, can you remind me what the, you said the heart gives meaning, the back of the throat one, it's expression. What was Pashyanti? That's the first state of sound. That's all, that, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a state where... Uh, similar to Vak, right? Huh? Similar to Vak in the first movement. Yeah, it, it, forms, it, it forms the first, it, 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 it forms first movement. In other words, it moves everything into place to prepare it. In the, I think in the write-up, I go deep into it. There's too much to really go into right now. Like say, Pashyanti points to base of the spine, sex, and solar plexus. Um, does that mean that sound is comes from those centers, or? Yeah, it it, it radiated from it radiated from the uh, the base of the spine up through the sex to to the solar plexus, <clears throat> and then it changed it changed itself. Into uh, the, the the third aspect at the heart center. Yeah. Could par, in a sense, play the same uh, role as like a kosh as a carrying agent for those other sounds? The what? Like the carrying agent for those other sounds? Or provides the background for those other sounds? It, it just, it's, it's the background. It's the, it's the great potential. It's the shiver in other words. So it's something greater than a castle. Mm -hmm. Be able to go into the evolution of the self. I think it's getting too late. Yeah. What you all say? So, any other questions on this? You can kind of see this from, from my lecture. You can see mm -hmm. this if you understand it. That's the chart from yesterday, right? Yeah. I, I talked about it earlier. I described it, how the soul pushes this down. And this is just the seven aspects of it, of, of how it gets to Kundalini. Did I miss anything? Um, uh, 
the 20 coils or letters, are, are those the, those come from Pasianti sound? I know that they're, they're on the, the centers, but are there's... Where? Are you adding these up? Yeah. Those are the petals. Those are the Sanskrit letters. But do they, do they come from that? How they come sound? from the BJ. From the chakra BJ. But the, uh, the sound itself goes through them. Because remember, the sound is what? The conscious. Huh? What is the sound? You guys know this. <laughs> the sound is what? Consciousness. Although it's, a, it's consciousness, it's the four states of sound, but it's also what? It's moving through, it's moving through these, through what vehicle? I said it earlier. The through the nadis. So what does the nadis do? You have these, you have the 200, the 200 some thousand nadis. What does it do? It goes through when it hit when when it comes to the chakras. What does it do? It crosses. Huh? It intersects. It crosses. It goes through the petals. So it vibrates itself through these petals. So each petal is like a vibration. And, and, yeah, that's how the consciousness lock itself into the body, into this, in, into that state of consciousness. Into all the realms of existence. Remember, I said that mm -hmm. it leaves the Kundalini and and it, and it passes through all these chakras, and that's how it links itself to all the realms of existence. And then it begin, and then it have to go through many many lives in order to unlink itself again. So so the sound, these sounds, which are actually the nadis, right? Mm -hmm. They pass through each petal, all 50 petals, right? And that's how they lock into it. And they terminate at the Christ center, which is the command center, all right? So the, the Pasyanti sound flows through those 20 petals of those three centers? Yes. Okay. And, and the 28 for the third Madhyana Hamasan? It becomes 28 when it gets there, right? By the time it gets up there. 28 and 20 is what? 48. 48 and then the two, and then by, by the time it comes to the Christ Center, you have a set of, uh, of concentrated idol and pangala it goes into the Christ center. Mm -hmm. And then it expresses itself as what? There's eyes, nose, first nose, eyes, mouth. You know, mm -hmm. that's how it expresses itself. And that's all four states of sound expressing itself at that point. Or well, consciousness. Mm -hmm. Basic psychic ability is an aspect of the sound. Now, but the reason that a lot of like psychics get it wrong is because they haven't under they don't understand the meaning behind it, right? Yeah, they don't. They haven't accessed the, the information that 